Eddie had another great hunt in September of 1950. It started when a soldier he had met during the war, a Canadian named Donald, invited him up to the Yukon for a moose hunt. Donald's family owned several thousand acres, but he was the only one who hunted, and there were plenty of moose to go around. But he warned that the biggest bulls tended to hide out in some very remote areas, so pack your gear accordingly. In other words, it was exactly the type of hunt Eddie lived for, and he jumped at the chance. Then Donald brought up the idea of hunting with a handgun, which was a novelty back in those days. Eddie was all for it. He owned a 44 Magnum that could bring down a moose if he made a good shot. One month later, Eddie arrived by float plane on a large glacier-fed lake just north of the town of Whitehorse. Donald was waiting, and he led the way to the family cabin. That night, while they ate a couple of big T-bone steaks, Donald told Eddie what to expect. The moose in that region were the largest in the world, and spreads reaching 70 or 80 inches were not unheard of. There was one moose in particular that had been eluding Donald for several years. I call him the ghost, Donald said, because he moves through the woods just like one. I never see him for more than a second or two, but I can tell you this, he's gigantic. Eddie was so excited he could hardly sleep. And the next morning, the hunt began.
Finally, Eddie had to stop for a rest. While he was glassing from a hilltop, he spotted the largest moose he'd ever seen, the ghost. It had to be. I remember how Eddie's face always lit up when he talked about that moose. The bull had massive palms, a 76 inch spread, and a live weight of nearly 1,500 pounds. The shoulder mount still hangs over the fireplace in my family's hunting cabin. 